Disturbing news coming in from Australia after disturbing vandalism and attacks on Hindu temples in Australia and even in Canada. Now in Australia we have another incident that's taken place. Uh, threats have been sent to a temple administration in Australia. This appears to be the Melbourne temple on Khalistani radar. We are being told that a threat has been sent out and the threat quotes here, cancel your bhajan pujas or face consequences. This is a Kali temple in Melbourne in Australia that has received this threat and appears to be from the pro-Khalistan supporters. Remember these are series of attacks, vandalism and physical threats that are also coming in now. And uh, this is uh, the Makali Temple in Melbourne in Australia. We'll try and get you more details on that. But what you're looking at are previous attacks that have taken place, whether it's in Australia or in Canada. There have been uh, uh, Hindustan, India, Murdabad slogans uh, that have been uh, painted. Pro-Khalistan, pro Bhindranwali slogans that have been sprayed painted on uh, the walls of uh, the temples. Uh, you're looking at previous visuals in January of the Swami Narayan Temple in Australia, the Iskon Temple. Uh, clearly for the management, remember, it's been a moment of fear uh, for the Indian diaspora as well. It, it appears to be an uncertain time because uh, right now with the, the authorities have ensured that they will be looking into what exactly happened. But these disturbing incidents are reflective of perhaps of these uh, activities that even uh, the Indian security agencies have alerted about that uh, Pakistan and ISI sponsored Khalistani activities are escalating and increasing abroad and not just for Punjab here in the country but even for the Indian diaspora these attacks are being planned so you know it, these are incidents and threats that cannot be taken lightly because it could be also setting a precedent and in many ways uh, the pro-Khalistan supporters are testing waters by this vandalism and attacks on the temples. We'll try and get you more details on that but uh, from what we've been reporting consistently since last year but specifically from the start of 2023 both in Canada and specifically in Australia there have been an increase in vandalism uh, and uh, defacing of temple properties of the Hindu community and these are across. Remember whether it's a Makali temple or an Iskon temple or it was a Ram temple in Canada. There are different temples uh, that are being uh, defaced and vandalized with these spray paints. Now the authorities have said they will be looking at the CCTV footage to find out more about it. But uh, many of these managements have said when they've landed up in the morning to offer prayers and opened the gates, they saw that the walls had Sant Bhindran Valley for example is a martyr. Terrorist Bhindran Valley uh, is being seen as a saint and a martyr and India Murdabad slogans on Hindu temples. And uh, Australia today has been constantly reporting there from the country. Joining me now, the editor of Australia Today, Jitar J. Bhardwaj is joining me. Jitar, you know, again a conversation that we are having like we had uh, a few weeks ago. Uh, wh where is this temple? Is it Melbourne again? And what are the authorities doing in Australia? Unfortunately, it's Melbourne Puja and authorities seems to be doing nothing as of uh, my understanding is. This incident is a couple of weeks back and it was reported immediately by the priest Bhavana and she she was kind of shaken by uh, this threat call. I mean, this is a very peaceful place where a lot of international students get food, a lot of uh, uh, women get support in terms of if they need and uh, this kind of a person getting a threat that uh, if you go ahead with your puja bhajan program which yeah. they are organizing on 4th of march they will say uh, face consequences and these consequences this person the caller says will not be pretty um, uh, so, like, so uh, Jitar, you are telling us that uh, the priest of this temple received a direct call and was yes. reported also to the authorities? Yes, she has uh, reported it to Victoria Police. She received a call a couple of weeks back uh, while uh, they were doing a bandara. She was yes. the last person. She told, tells me that I was doing my lunch when uh, this call came. I thought a couple of the students from uh, nearby universities, they must be uh, asking me. Normally she received these calls saying, is the Bhandara still on? She thought uh, this will be the call from the students. And I'll tell them, yes, yes, we got some food for you, come over. Mm. But this was a different call. She 
uh, this person who is the suspicion me? on Jitarth? Uh, is there a suspicion to a group? Uh, because increasingly it's been the pro Khalistan group. So is there suspicion on that here also, or that is for now anonymous? We don't know who this individual could be. Okay, I can give you some indications if uh, that is what you are after. This person was speaking in Punjabi. Punjabi from uh, uh, Bhavna tells me that uh, that Punjabi which she understands was from with the accent of Amritsar Jalandhar area. That's what hmm. she tells me. Hmm. So uh, uh, it cannot be a, a Australian person. It cannot be somebody else. It cannot hmm. be. Uh, it was a specific person who was hmm. talking in Punjabi and threatening her to stop her Puja Bhajan program, which is scheduled for 4th of March. Hmm. Why uh, he's saying it? He's hmm. saying that uh, whatever singer you have called for your um, uh, Bhajan uh, uh, night is not acceptable to them. He's a strong Hindu, that's what he, uh, this Jitar, person is how, how is the Indian diaspora looking at this? Because uh, many would say that uh, it appears to be anonymous, these uh, vandalism, you know, nobody knows who's doing it. Is it being exaggerated? What would you want to tell the viewer watching right now that uh, th th is there any sort of uh, fear, uncertainty that the local diaspora there also is facing right now? See, Pooja, as a journalist, I can only report on the facts what we know. So mm. we present the facts. Fact is, Hindu temples, three Hindu temples were vandalized by goons, Khalistani mm. goons here in Melbourne. All the temples which were uh, defaced, they had slogans which was praising Khalistan and Bindrawali. Uh, a normal person wouldn't do that unless he is or she is Khalistani supporters. Second thing, how uh, do I know that? Because I have received direct messages from these Khalistani operators on uh, Twitter, on TikTok, or on uh, WhatsApp messages they have sent. And they send it with all the glamour and courage that they say, look, this is what we have done. Do whatever you want to do. Hmm. So uh, they vandalize a temple at 3 a.m. and they send a message at 5.30 a.m. or 6 a.m. Who will have the video? Somebody is vandalizing yes. the video and then they have it. So uh, there is... This is the fact I can present in front of the people. No, but the that's, yes, what you're telling us uh, is also very important and uh, you know, we want to try and bring in as many facts as well. Uh, Jitar, please stay on with me because I'm also joined on this panel right now by Sara Elgate. She's a scholar. In fact, she extensively documents uh, the Hindu religion. Sara, if you can hear me. And she, in fact, uh, is very vocal uh, about uh, the anti-Hindu hate that is also being seen and reports and talks about the Hindu phobia as well, very active on social media. Uh, Sara, if you can hear me and if my voice is very clear to you right now, what is unfolding in Australia? Because what, from where it looks like sitting here in India, this is concerning. This cannot be just discarded as, as perhaps random isolated incidents. How are you looking at this, Sara? I think we're trying to get uh, that uh, audio line uh, with her uh, connected. So in just a short while, remember Sarah Gates, uh, while is uh, an Australian citizen, she's uh, associated with the university there, but she extensively uh, has been documenting and has been talking about how there are specific attacks on uh, the Hindu community. In fact, it's very interesting that she gets trolled on social media over this, but she's very consistent with her views. Jitartha, before we go across uh, to Sarah as well, uh, what we're looking at is in Australia. Uh, just yesterday I was reporting about the Ram Temple in Canada. So there are these isolated incidents. Should, we, th should they be seen as a pattern or let's keep them as isolated incidents right now? How can we keep them as an isolated incident? The Ram Temple in uh, Canada, we received a message as that was happening there. These goons are so uh, um, into themselves, I can't explain you. They did that graffiti at uh, Ram Temple and they sent the message to us, uh, here is a gift for you. They, they just call it a gift to us when we are reporting that they have done one more time. Uh, the last time when the Brampton thing happened, they didn't send me the uh, straight message. However, they tagged us in Twitter uh, while they were uh, they did uh, post their videos. So every time some temple thing happens, the same people send us video. So uh, there is a connect. How do they get it? 
How do they have the videos before anybody or the law enforcement authority or even the temple community? Babs Temple, I can tell you, I call Babs Temple and uh, uh, try to confirm with them that whether their temple has been vandalized. They said, no, we don't have any information. And then after 15 minutes, they reconfirmed with the priest who was there uh, for the prayers. Yes, yes, our temple has been vandalized. So they know it before it. So who will know before anyone, the person who has done it? That is the proof there. Priest, Bhavna, that you're telling us about uh, has decided to take a step back or she wants to or intends to continue with the prayers uh, at this point. One, that question. And Jitar, second is this clearly appears to be to flare communal tensions. Uh, on the ground and from what we know from our sources as well, that Khalistani supporters still have a very small segment of support. So it's not that the Sikh community supports them. They definitely do not support the Khalistan agenda here in India. That's a good thing. And do you think that needs to be kept to ensure that between two communities that tension does not flare up? See, we have to be very clear about this fact that Sikhs and Khalistanis are two different people. Yes. Sikhs do not support. I have a very... Uh, I'm a, a number of six friends who give me call whenever I receive threat, they call me. Jitar, you call me. Whenever 12 o'clock in the night, we'll come. Uh, let's see who is these idiots. Hmm. Now, the Khalistanis are the goons who are, uh, I would like to call, they are the people who support terrorism. They yes. support violence. They are the person who should be persecuted anywhere in the world. So um, we have a very clear understanding of Sikhs and Khalistan. We can't mix two uh, people. Yes. However, they, these Khalistanis have scared the Sikh community so much. They, mm. they talk in private, but they say that we can't come in public against mm. these goons because they threat us. We will uh, boycott you. We will uh, not let you come into I, and the And I'm sure, I'm sure the fear, whether it's with the ammunition or more, it is uh, not easy to actually stay away from that fear too. But good to know that at least communal tensions are not being flared up. That's the responsibility of both the communities. Jitar, stay on with me. Sara Gates, scholar, joins me who extensively documents uh, the anti-Hindu attacks as well and has extensively studied different aspects of Hinduism. And she's not an Indian. She's not a Hindu, which, uh, you know, is very interesting. Sara, welcome uh, to the discussion. And I see you get trolled a lot on social media every time you try to speak up for Hindu community. Uh, but how should these attacks and these vandalism be seen? Should they be seen as isolated, a pattern? What are you looking at? What is happening? Well, there's definitely a pattern and it's been going on for years. We've seen uh, isolated incidents within the community. Uh, going on for years of bullying, harassment, intimidation. That, that includes Sikhs who uh, disapprove of Khalistan. We've had violent incidents. We've had people uh, being uh, protested against because they're running an interfaith basic emailer. We've had people threatened by Baba Khalsa. We've had so many incidents that have been yeah. building up. So um, Sikhs for Justice are targeting Australian Hindus uh, Indian Hindus and myself uh, as well, anybody who basically raises their voice against them. So, how, it's, how do you um, think the Australian authorities need to crack to down right, right away on this, Sarah? Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, the police must take it very seriously. The security, Australian security, must start taking this very, very seriously because it's a, it's definitely a risk, uh, and just to the everyday safety and feelings of safety the feelings of being able to express their religious freedom within Australia. And that applies to Sikhs as well, because I'm hearing that many Sikhs can't go to Gurudwara because they don't support Khalistan. And mm. that's a risk to their safety to go to Gurudwara. So they can't practice their religion at all. Uh, this, is the, this is where it's at here. It's very Asana, serious. you said that you also face uh, a level of threat because you are vocal. Can you tell us more about it? What do you mean by that? Oh, well, I've had death threats, um, I've had doxing, I've had people making complaints against me, uh, I've had to deal with online stigmatisation, I've been called a terrorist just because I stood up against terrorism, uh, I've been called everything that is normally called to anyone um, who's from India, so, um, and worse, because they add my... Um, they add my race and my gender into it. So I've been attacked by professors, by NGOs, 
uh, including uh, turbans for Australia. I've had them put their, their stamp on a uh, manifesto and circulate it through probably diplomatic channels to try and stop me mm. from speaking out. I've, I've had um, Hindu Council were asked to deplatform me by an mm. ABC News reporter. Mm. It's just the list goes on and on. I mean, and all I of this because you've been start speaking been about, about uh, how, how the Hindus are being targeted. Well, all I'm doing is I'm speaking against anti-Hindu sentiments mm. and anti-Hindu hatred um, and speaking up for the rights that, that Hindus do have in Australian society. I'm not doing anything uh, controversial. Uh, yes. it, we would do the same for anyone in Australia. It's just simply Australian values. That's, so that's, that's good to hear. For me that's good to as hear. An Australian. Sarah Gates, and thank you for speaking up as always, for being vocal uh, for the important human issues and Jadar Bhardwaj uh, as always uh, from Australia today for speaking Thank to you. India today. I appreciate it.